Hello, welcome to Pilates and Yoga with Vicky, prenatal yoga. Um, so set yourself up. I've got the mat in a crisscross formation just so I can move around and you get a better view, but you can just have a single mat. If you have lots of props to hand, the more props, the better. Um, so one bolster or two bolsters if you've got them, or several plump cushions, um, even oblong sofa cushions would be great as well. Lots of cushions. Um, some nice blankets can be good for padding. Uh, blocks if you've got them, otherwise the blocks aren't essential. And a strap is useful, but a dressing gown cord will work equally as well. So anything you want to improvise with, feel free to grab. Obviously you can pause me at any point to set yourself up or to check what you're doing by looking at the video for a moment. Um, so make this your own practice. Obviously being prenatal, you're really at a time you want to listen to your own body even more so, because it's doing so much. So really, although the practice is designed to be very safe for prenatal bodies, everybody is different. So listen to your body. If there's any pose that your body just doesn't like the feel of, then just come into a comfortable resting pose for yourself. Um, so please just take it to your own level. Now's not the time to try and stretch yourself to your full range. Just rein it back in a bit. We want to stretch things out, but with all the relaxing hormone pumping around your body, um, we don't want to overstretch either. So don't, don't try and push your edge at all. You know, rein yourself back from your edge of your stretch. And the theme of the class is going to be about balance, sattva. So in yoga, you've got sort of, nature's got sort of three gunas, they're called sort of different types of energy, like a kind of seesaw. You've got your raja, one side, which is kind of your overactivity and stimulation. And you've got your tamas, the other side, which is kind of underactivity, sluggishness. And then in the middle, you've got your sattva, the balanced, where we want to stay. And it's just, it equates to everything in your life, the food you eat, the um, environment around you, the activities you do, whether there's too much going on and you need to pull back, or whether actually, you know, you're perhaps oversleeping or you're eating foods devoid of energy, um, processed foods, so forth. That's more your tamas side. And then trying to find that middle ground in, is the balance where we want to be. Because during pregnancy, um, your balance gets physically taken, uh, you know, is a bit more challenging, but also emotionally, the hormones, all the thought process and emotions that go along with the idea of becoming a mother, perhaps a first or a, a second or so forth time. So bringing yourself to a calmer, more centered place is beautiful, especially now. So to start off with, I'm gonna take a bolster and just sort of straddle it. So you're sitting up nice and tall, your knees are either side and you're just beginning to lengthen through the spine. And it's always good to tap into our breath. And often it's our breath that lets us know if we're out of balance, if it's too shallow, too fast. Or, you know, when we're asleep, obviously it starts to slow so much more. So again, you can get this indication of where you're at. So what I'm going to get you to do is with your arms, you're going to go palm up as you inhale, softening the shoulders all the way up to your nose. And exhale, slowly turn the palms down and slowly mindfully move the hands back down. And I want you inwardly to say to yourself the mantra, so hum. So it's meant to mimic the natural sound of breath. So you're saying to yourself, so as you elongate your spine and draw the air in, and you're saying hum to yourself as you exhale and ground down through your seat. I'll invite you to close your eyes if you're comfortable to do so. Now we're just gonna do a good few rounds of breath to get ourselves a little bit more centered for the practice.
Just do five more rounds. Repeating the Soham Mantra. One more. And then slowly flutter the eyes open and just check in with where you're at energy wise. We're going to do a subtle cat cow. We're going to slide our hands along our thighs. So inhale, open up through the heart space. Exhale, tuck the tailbone under and round the back. Drop the shoulders. Again, inhale, broaden that front body. Exhale, rounding through the back. Soften the shoulders, the neck, the face. Three more. Slowly back to center. And just adding in a little bit more arm movement this time. So you're going to inhale, cactus back, do the same spinal extension. Exhale as you round and flex forward, diving forward almost with the arms. So join in with me. Inhale, cactus back. Exhale, arc it forward. Emptying yourself out fully. Four more. Broad in the front body. And then shine through the back of your heart space as you fold forward. Three more. Spread the fingers even. Two more. Last one. Movement to breath. Slowly back to center. And then just sweep the arms, just gently side to side. Reset the spine a bit. Beautiful. And then we'll do some neck stretches because we tend to hold a lot of tension up here. So taking your hands and you're going to link them, but link them behind. So taking them to your right hip, take your elbow tips towards the earth, and grow tall like a plant growing towards the sky. See if you can draw the rib cage in a little bit, just so you're not completely arcing and arching that lower back. Inhale, grow tall, and then exhale, take the right ear to the right shoulder. Whilst letting the left shoulder drop, the elbow tips work towards the earth. And slowly turning your nose towards the earth. Just find any ear. Any point in this stretch when you turn your nose, your chin's tucked, that you feel you're really getting into any tight spots on the left side of that neck. And you have 10 breaths here, not pushing it, just encouraging the body to lengthen, to let go. And you can keep your eyes closed at any point in the practice if that feels nice to do so. Five more breaths. Just noticing any sensations as you release and relax. Slowly back up to center. Take the arms behind so you've still got them linked, but just take them behind. 
broaden through the collarbone, taking the pinkies upwards, stretching through the shoulders gently. And then take the hands to the left hip. Let the elbow tips sink to the earth. Inhale, lengthen up through the spine. Exhale, left ear to left shoulder, tuck the chin in. And again, when you're ready, just explore, turning your nose towards the earth more, finding a nice point of stretch on the right side of the neck. And we'll have 10 breaths here. Still inhaling up the spine as you lengthen towards that sky and exhaling as you ground down towards your seat. Five more breaths, finding softness where there's been stiffness. Slowly ease yourself back into center. Again, stretch the arms out behind, keeping the fingers linked, pinkies drawing upwards. And just puff the chest, open up through that throat. And then slowly release. Keeping yourself traveling tall, sweeping the arms up, taking the right hand over the left wrist as we come into a lateral stretch. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, arc up. So you're really stretching through the left side body rib cage, and then just gazing wherever comfortable for your neck. Let the shoulder blades slide down. Breathe really deeply into that left lung space. Five breaths. Slowly back up, switching the hands onto the other wrist. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, arc it over. Soften the neck. Breathe into the right lung space. Shoulders slide down the back body. Five breaths. Slowly back up, beautiful. Float the arms back down, give the shoulders a little bit of a roll, take the weight off them. And then with the arms, we're just gonna do a few little wrist stretches. Your wrists, especially during pregnancy, can build up with more fluid and you can get carpal tunnel if you're not so lucky. But just where you're really trying to move through every joint in this rather funky movement with the hands, just helps all the nerve and tendons glide more freely. So just do a few of those. And it also helps counteract when we take our weight onto our wrists in extension. Just do five more. See if we can just get things moving a bit freer. Beautiful, just flick it out. Move the bolster out the way. But I find that's just a nice comfortable seated position. If you like to meditate and things like that, then that's a nice way to do it, especially when pregnant. I've got a meditation pillow, which is a bit bean baggy in its style, but just use a firm plump cushion is fine. And you're just gonna sit in a way that you've just got your hips tilted forward slightly. And then from there, you can have a block if you've got one, otherwise you can do it without. You're going to take the right leg at about a right angle in front of you, and then the left foot's coming on top of the right knee. Again, you're sitting forward on the edge of the cushion, and you can use this block or whatever height, depending on how your hips are, how bendy they are today. You can take it to a lower edge for a bit more intensity or keep it high. And if you pull the top toes towards the knee, it helps protect that knee joint. So just softening the shoulders, let them drop. We're gonna be here for two minutes. So find a position that's comfortable. 
The shins are kind of parallel in front of you. If it's too intense, you can bring them a bit closer, the feet a little bit closer into the body or keep them out parallel or keep a lower angle with that top leg and even hinge a bit forward at the hips if you want a bit extra stretch. Slide the shoulders down the back and choosing your level you're working to. We'll go for, we've already started, but we'll go for two minutes. Again, just noticing the sensations in your body. Allowing those sensations to keep you present. And just breathing freely. One more minute, always having the option of coming out if it's too much or leaning back further and keeping the top leg high is absolutely fine. We want to stretch ourselves, not in any way, punish ourselves. And the breath should be an indication of whether you're pushing too hard at all. Again, finding that balance. Let the tension melt out of the face, neck, and shoulders. Now we'll do five more breaths. Slowly coming up. Take the block away if you had it. And you're going to take the same leg position with the right leg. The left knee is going to butt itself up against the sole of the right foot. So you've kind of roughly got a 90 degrees at both legs. You might have the left heel tucked in a bit closer. And this again is where a bolster is quite handy. I'll show you without first so you can see where I'm going. You're kind of going to take a big sweep as you inhale, find your length and exhale, hinge forward. And you can use the bolster or not. And you just coil up through the back. It might be you move the cushion support more over to the right hip and then sink back in. You can use the bolster for your forearms and head to make it more restorative, up to you. And we're going for two minutes again. So just fitting the stretch around the right hip glute region. Keeping length in the spine. I'll let you know when you've got a minute to go. And you might find that you shuffle your torso forward as the body just gives to the stretch a bit. Soften the belly. And as you progress in pregnancy, you might have this stretch much higher. You might sit taller and that is absolutely fine. We always want to create space for the baby. So don't do any stretches or poses that you feel you're squishing that region. Your body will let you know. One more minute.
five more big, beautiful breaths into the front, side, and the back body. And then when you're ready, slowly rise up, always gentle as we come out. If you had a bolster, move it to one side. And then take your arms back, lean back, slowly take one leg out at a time, center your bottom on the cushion. Take the feet about what would be just wider than mat width and just let the knees fall to the left as you look to the right. Just windscreen wipering your legs. Gently just to release all that energy that built up through the stretch. Beautiful. One more. And then coming back in, and this time doing our square pose, but with the other side. So left foot on top of right knee. Sorry, right foot on top of left knee. Again, sitting forward on that cushion. And one side might be quite different to the other. That's perfectly normal. And choosing whether you do a high edge of a block or a low edge, if you want the feet closer to you for less intensity. And you can do it without the block if you don't have a block to hand. Pull the top toes towards the right knee. Coil up through the back and hinge even just a tiny bit forward can make a huge difference. Or just staying upright might be absolutely where you're at. You can even lean back if you feel that's going to be better for you. We're going to go for two minutes. Close the eyes if you wish. And you can return to that so hum mantra with the breath, if that helps to keep you present. One more minute to go. Drop out of that thinking mind. Come into the breath, into the body. Five more breaths. And so you lean back, ease your top leg off. And you're going to take that right knee and again, put it up against the left sole of the foot. Taking the right heel perhaps in towards you a bit and the left shin parallel. And you might shuffle the pillow a bit more under the left hip. And you're going to sweep up as we lengthen, inhale. Exhale, taking it forward, depending where you are at your pregnancy. It might be you stay nice and high. It might be you feel comfortable coming lower. And again, you can use the bolster in front to make it more restorative. Working to whatever angle, you can play with quite how you're angling your torso to where the stretch feels like it's spreading the most through that left hip and glute. I'm gonna grab my bolster back in. I'll go for two minutes.
Really shine through the back of your heart space as you inhale. And really feel the connection between yourself and the earth and your support as you exhale. Got one more minute. If you need to make any little micro adjustments because your body's giving you a little bit more to work with, then feel free <coughs> to do so. Few more breaths. And when you really slowly rise up, same as we did before, gently lean back, taking one leg and then the other, centering yourself on your cushion and doing windscreen wiper legs. You can add in the neck movement or not, depending what you fancy. And you can even try and drive the knee, like when you're this way, the left knee towards the bottom corner of the mat, and then the right knee towards the bottom corner of the mat, if you want a little bit more sensation in the stretch. Make this nice and fluid. Beautiful. Then I'm gonna sit myself around the lengthways because it'll be easier for you to see and find my strap. So dressing gown cord, Anything that you can hook around your leg will work. Sitting yourself again on the front edge of the cushion. So you just get a little bit more tilt at the pelvis, taking the left leg in towards you and the right leg out long. If for any reason you find it more comfortable, having the leg around that way, have a play, see which feels better, that's fine, or in this way. And you're gonna have the bolster up behind you sort of vertically behind the cushion, and you'll see why um, shortly. <laughs> and then taking the straps. So these straps are great when you're pregnant because you don't necessarily get as much reach forward when you've got a bit of an obstacle. You shouldn't call, shouldn't call a baby an obstacle. <laughs> taking yourself, lining your nose up with your toe. Inhale, lengthen, and just draw yourself in. You put the strap on the ball of the foot more, you get into the calves a bit more. Soften the shoulders. And taking it to where you feel a stretch. Again, we'll go for two minutes, but you can release at any point. Working into the right hamstring. Trying to coil up through the back. And hooking the strap so you can pull those toes towards you. Most importantly, just keep breathing. You can draw the right thigh bone back in its socket and let the left hip bones swivel forwards a bit. If that gives you a bit more reach, you can explore that. One more minute. So breathing deeply. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, deepen.
Five more breaths. Slowly sit back up and stay in the same position on the legs. But shuffle yourself back so your bottom's right at the back end of the cushion this time, so it's up against the bolster. If you want some extra height on the bolster, you don't want to lie flat back on it because we're going to come into a nice reclined tree. Then you can just pop some blocks or other pillows under the bolster to make it more inclined. So back in that same position with the left leg drawn in and slowly lower yourself down. So your spine's nice and straight, the arms spread wide, palm up. And just take a moment to adjust your props to make sure you feel supported in the right way. As you really just open yourself up. Again, we'll be here for two minutes. One more minute, really just let the earth hold you as you let go of any holding in the body. Five more breaths. When you're ready, using the hands slowly, bring yourself back up. Take the left foot out to the side of the mat so you're nice and wide. The right leg's over to the right side of the mat, left foot to the left. Inhale, coil up. And exhale, twist around to the right so you can hug the elbow into that left knee or the hand. Sweeping the right arm behind. Just for a nice open twist. Five breaths. Gazing behind you if comfortable. Soften the shoulders. Slowly back to center, beautiful work. Switching legs now, so getting yourself forward on that cushion so you get that little bit of pelvic tilt, these front hip bones tilt forwards a bit. Left toes pulled towards you, nose in line with toes and the right foot in towards you, or if you prefer, you can have it round to the side as suggested last time. Take your strap, hook it round the ball of that foot. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, hinge, and it might be you don't hinge far at all. It might be you stay completely upright, but you're still feeling a stretch in the hamstring. That's what we're after. It's not what it looks like. It's what it feels like in your body. Drawing the left thigh bone back, let the right hip 
Swivel if you want. Now just keep track of time. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, deepen. Keeping the back nice and straight and long. Relax the neck, the face. One more minute. Five more breaths. Gently release the strap, drawing back up, keep the legs in the same position. And as before, working ourselves back so our bottom's right up against the bolster, ensuring our spine's gonna be nice and straight using our arms to ease ourselves back into a recline tree. Take the arms and branches, if you like, and spread them wide. Let the heart sing. Melt tension out of the face. No tension behind the eyes or between the eyebrows. One more minute to go. Just breathe expansively into that front body. Five more breaths. And then when you're ready, using your arms again, ease yourself forwards. 
taking the left foot out to the left side of the mat, the right foot out to the right, hugging the right knee, either with the cupping of your hand or your elbow, sweep the left arm behind, open twist to the left, gazing backwards. Inhale, lengthen up through the spine, exhale, twist, five breaths. Again, not forcing yourself, finding some softness in the stretch. And slowly back to center. Beautiful, take both legs in, wriggle your toes a little bit. And however is easiest for you to maneuver yourself onto all fours. This can be where it's quite nice to have a blanket over the knees, depending what surface your mat's on. But you can take a blanket under the knees for a bit of padding, Move the bolster so you can see me. And then just taking yourself, hands under shoulders, knees under hips. Soften the shoulders down from the ears. And a gentle cat-cow as you inhale, shine the heart through. Exhale, like you're tucking your tail between your legs, slowly articulate the spine, rounding all the way up. Four more. Inhale. Slowly movement to breath. Exhale. Three more. Two more. Last one. And finding neutral. Pushing the floor away, slight lower back curve. And then we're just going to do a little bit of work on our core. We want to keep it strong whilst it's having to hold a fair bit. We want to keep it strong, but we don't, if you're in the late stage of pregnancy, you want to work the abdominals too much. So you don't have to do this if it doesn't feel good for you. Otherwise, you tuck the toes under and just hover the knees off for five breaths. Just keep your head and gaze looking softly forward. So whenever you're trying to watch what I'm doing, keep yourself grounded. Two more breaths. And slowly coming down, beautiful. From here, we'll send our right leg through into a low lunge. So walking it forward, so the knees above the ankle, you're finding a bit of a stretch and energetically dragging the heel and knee towards each other. So we're not just dumping into the hips. Firm your footing and then inhale, open it up, cup behind the head and take the weight of the head for a change. Five breaths here. Scissoring the inner thighs towards each other for a bit of extra stability. and slowly release. And if you have to make your stance wider, so your knee and feet wider apart from each other to give yourself room for your belly, that's absolutely fine. Take it back round to all fours. Instead of the usual vinyasa, we'll modify a little bit, so come forward, just go halfway, working to the arms a little bit, back up, and then into child's. Taking your hands into a pillow, or you can keep it higher and use a bolster, but the knees nice and wide to make room for the baby. Five breaths. Taking it forward again. And then toes under. And if downward dog still feels comfortable in your practice, it might be a wider one with the feet and hands slightly wider, then slowly exhale up, bending the knees as generously as you wish, pushing like you're trying to get rid of a crease in the mat and, and trying to anchor the heels towards the earth, doesn't matter if they meet or not. Release the head, gazing between the ankles, four more breaths. 
If you find this makes you dizzy, you can just stay in child's and we'll meet you shortly back in all fours. Slowly lower back to your all fours. Gazing just towards the front edge of the mat. We'll do the little hover again with the knees to just give a bit of core strength. But if you want to leave that out, absolutely fine. Push into the earth, hover the knees off for five breaths. Slowly down, beautiful. This time sending the left leg forward. Choosing whatever stance works for you. Ground down, knee above ankle, and a bit of a stretch in that right thigh. Once you've got a firm foundation, inhale, sweep up. Cup the back of the head. Just open up the front body. Five breaths. And slowly release, framing the foot, taking it back into child's. Give your arms outstretched if you want. And if you want more of an arm stretch, you can bring the hands closer together. And then you can melt the elbows down as you release for three more breaths. Slowly rising back up to all fours, coming back to downward facing dog if it's in your practice. Inhale, prepare, exhale, sending yourself back. It's all about keeping the back long, the torso long. So bend the knees if you need to, absolutely fine. Pressing into the base of the fingers and thumb so the weight's not just in the wrists. Three more breaths. Slowly back down to the knees. And then coming into a lizard lunge. So you're gonna step the right leg forward, both hands on the inside. Find the stretch that feels good for you for that left thigh. You just wanna be right on top of the knee because that's a bit uncomfortable the knee. Come forward off it a bit. And then kind of clamp the right knee in towards the arm, coil the back through, and orientate the left hip towards the earth. Again, you can go wider with the stance. You need to create more room. Three more breaths. And then from here, however many steps it takes you, we're going to step it up. So we're going to come down to Malasana squat. I'll show you front on because it might be easier for you to see. You can do this. A few options. You can do it so you can sit on a block of any height if that's more comfortable. Or you can do it with the mat rolled up. So you can have the edge of the mat and have that under the heels if your heels aren't meeting the earth. Whatever works for you, we're going to be here for a minute. Send the elbows out into the thighs, coil your spine so you're nice and tall. And really sink. So this is a beautiful one for preparing for birth. Really opening through the pelvis area into that sacral base chakras. Where there's a lot going on at the moment. I'll just keep a bit of an eye on the time so I don't keep you here all day. And just breathing as you sink and soften, coming out at any point if you're not comfortable. You stay here. I'm going to travel back. So I'm at the front of the mat again. Five more breaths.
and then lean forward. You might need to remove props, that's fine. But you're gonna send the right leg back this time. So lizard lunge on the other side. Again, coil forward, knee drawn in. Sinking, so you feel the stretch, but not dumping through the hips at all. Five breaths. Beautiful. And then however you want to get there, whatever props you need, come back into Malasana. We'll go for one more minute. Anchoring down through the tailbone, pressing the thumbs towards your heart space and chin parallel to the earth. Five more breaths. And slowly take the hands down. We're going to come into a forward fold. So if you've got anything under your bottom or heels, move it out the way. And then slowly send yourself up, keeping the feet wide. Give yourself space. And then just dangle, cradling the hands elbow to elbow. And again, if you don't like these inversions, just go back to Charles or whoever's comfortable. If you're here, however, and you're happy, taking the elbows and pressing them almost outwards into the fingertips to find some breadth in the back body. Let the head release. And really just allow the body to lengthen, to loosen. You might sway a little if that feels good. And then anchoring down through the heels, slowly restacking the spine. Gently, slowly, slowly give your body a chance to adjust. Sweeping the arms all the way up and then hands to heart center in Jali Mudra taking the feet to whatever width is comfortable. And just have five breaths here, settling your energy. Take a big circle again with the arms, inhale. And then tracing a line down the center of your body as you exhale. Taking the feet wide if you need to. Now we're going to slowly come back down to our knees. We're going to set up for a modest, modified sphinx pose. So again, it depends on your stage of pregnancy, but pretty early on, we don't want to lie on our bellies. So it's handy to have... I've got two bolsters, but you can always, for this under your hips, just use some plump cushions and pillows, it's fine. And you just lie that right under the hips. So you give your belly this beautiful space. And then you can choose. You can either do it with just long arms, shoulders slid down the back, toes grounded, hold it there. Or you can do it with your elbows on the bolster. Or if your shoulders don't like that, you can do it lying down. We're trying to get into the upper back stretch a bit here. So choosing your position for two minutes and you can alternate between the positions is absolutely fine. Just sinking down through the elbows, hips. And breathing.
going to focus on opening up that upper back a bit. One more minute. Again, choosing to take a more restorative option, turning your head one side and lying over the front cushion if you wish. Five more breaths. Then slowly, however it's easiest to gently ease yourself out. Taking the bolster pillow and turning it around vertically and sinking back into a child's. You might want to have another cushion or blanket for your head and just drape yourself over. Arms can go wide. Letting go. We'll go for a minute here. Soften and respond to your body by maneuvering a little bit if it feels like you can make yourself more comfortable. Five more breaths, and then we'll just turn the head the other way for a minute. And slowly, just gently turn the head the other direction, just to give ourselves a gentle neck stretch. It might be you tuck the chin slightly to gain a bit of length in the back of the neck, whatever works for you. And just release. Whatever holding you have in the body, let it go. Five more breaths. Slowly rising back out, give your shoulders 
a little bit of a roll. And then we'll just come to the final Shavasana. So again, depending on how comfortable you are on your back, you might want to take Shavasana on your side where you can just lie on your side with a pillow between your legs and one under your head it can be quite nice. You might have a pillow or cushion underneath where the baby is. Just having yourself set up in a way that feels comfortable. We'll go for a final two minutes here. Just noticing how we've brought more balance back in the body, cleared any blockages of energy, and found a more sattvic place, a calm, tranquil energy. I'm going to slowly rise myself back up, but you can stay for as long as you wish in your Shavasana. Thank you so much for joining me today. Have a beautiful rest of the day. Namaste.